back in Ireland, King Conacher had, through force of arms, destroyed or made peace with his enemies and established his right to rule. His land was prosperous, but he had become restless. He went to see Cathbad the Druid on an evening two years after the exile of Nish. Cathbad listened in silence, for he knew what weighed upon the king. King Conacher spoke of it this way. Our greatest people, the three torches of the gale, Nish, Alan and Arden, are not amongst us. It is unfit that they be in exile on account of a woman only. I am going to send Fergus Macree to Alpa to announce the king's pardon and invite them here to Evin Macha for a great feast. So shall it be, said Cathbad, and it was done. Fergus arrived at Loch Etta three days later with the king's message, and there Nish welcomed him. Fergus spoke of news from Ulster, and nostalgia grew in Nish. He desired to go home more than anything, and he went to Deirdre in a green field high above the glen to tell her the good news. She listened to Nish and was frightened. They talked until a pale wash of light remained in the western sky, though Deirdre knew his resolve and that nothing could change it. In the morning, they walked along the high cliffs over the reef and the hissing waters of the ocean. She tried to persuade Nish from departing. I had a vision last night. Three ravens came to us from Evan Macha with three drops of honey in their beaks and took away with them three drops of blood. What means this dream? It means Fergus comes to us with offers of peace as sweet as honey, but the three drops of blood are Alan, Arden, and you, my soul, Conacher is a flatterer and the honey is a trap for death. Despite the vision, Nish decided to return without Deirdre's consent. We will lay aside our grievance, Nish told Deirdre. We sail tomorrow morning. Deirdre shed tears through the night and hardly slept.
In the morning, they gathered at the shore where Fergus waited with the sailing ship. The air smelled of tar and sunburned barnacles. They set off early and the mist intermingled with the sky and the coast of Alba became blue and then pale blue until gradually it faded from sight altogether. By midnight, the full moon glowed upon their sails and the wind tugged at the ropes. Deirdre brought forth her harp and sang a gentle song. The brothers were stilled by its sadness. They each looked upwards while she sang and their hearts were halved more swiftly than the sword divides an apple. At last they could see the sun rise upon the north hills of Ireland. On shore, Fergus travelled ahead by horse and gave his word to the king. The sons of Ushnik have come. Let your kindness be shown, he said. But I am not ready to receive them, said Conacher. Send them to the inn of the Red Branch. My house shall be ready tomorrow. 